Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on populating a combo box based on the selection made in another combo box. As always, if you find this video useful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. I have in this workbook two worksheets. And for this example, I'm gonna start with the storage worksheet. So I have data and storage. I'm gonna start with storage. So let's assume that we're working with a mental health agency and they primarily deal with four disorders, depression, anxiety, OCD, and substance use. And as a client comes into the agency and becomes potentially a participant in a research study, they are diagnosed with one of these disorders, if applicable, and we have a list of treatments provided by the counselors in the agency based on the disorder. So for example, if a participant enters the agency and they're diagnosed with anxiety, we have here in column C, cognitive therapy, behavior therapy, rational emotive behavior therapy, reality therapy, and existential therapy. So these five treatments are available in this particular agency and the list of treatments is different depending on the disorder. So we're going to want a combo box to list the disorders here in column A and another combo box to list the treatments based on the disorder that was selected. So I used here named ranges, more specifically dynamic named ranges. So you go to the formulas ribbon up top and the name manager you can see the five named ranges used here. So you can see here under refers to that the offset function is used in the formula that creates the dynamic named range. So if I add values to any of these columns, it's going to change the contents of the range. So if I add another disorder to column A after substance use in cell A5, then the disorder dynamic name range will contain the five values that would be in there. I'll close this and I want to move back now to the data worksheet. So the way I have this arranged, I have the participants here in column A, the treatment and the disorder in column B. Notice treatment comes first here. So even though the disorder is selected first and the treatment is selected second, I've put the treatment first here, and I'll show you that when I get to the code view. And this column B is ready for variables to be added. So if I move here to this green rectangle, I have this configured to open this user form, which I'll go through in more detail in the code view. The way I set this up, go right click, assign macro, you can see this is associated with a subroutine named sheet1.openform. So if I go to the code view, the Visual Basic Editor, Alt F11, you can see I have the user form here. And under the sheet1 code, which you can also access here on the top left, I have the subroutine open form and just has one line of code main form dot show so this displays this green user form I created this user form using the toolbox I dragged over two labels I changed the caption of one to disorder and the caption of the other to treatment also I have the two combo boxes combo box one and combo box two I have here a text box and then a command button so let's take a look at the code that we'll need to make this function as intended. So first I'm going to right click, click view code. And by default, it gives me user form underscore click. Up here in the top right, I'm going to select initialize and delete the default click event. So under user form initialize, I'm just going to place one line of code 
comma box one dot row source equals disorder. Now this is the dynamic name range that contains the disorders. So when the user form is opened, comma box one will have its row source set so that the disorders will appear in it. So if I stopped here and went over to the workbook, open the user form, and then clicked on this down arrow in comma box one, I have the four disorders listed. Moving back to the Visual Basic Editor, I'm going to build the subroutine for combo box one click. So I'll go back to the user form and right click on combo box one, click view code. It has combo box one change here. I'm going to move up to the top right and set this to click. Then the code for this subroutine, I'll paste in. I'm going to declare x as an integer and set x to equal combo box one dot list index. So this value will change based on the selection the user makes in combo box one. The first selection in that combo box will have a list index of zero. So then moving here to the select case select case x, case is 0, the row source will be set to depression, 1, anxiety, 2, OCD, and 3, which is the last selection available, substance use. So the selection of an item in combo box 1 changes the row source in combo box 2. So next I have the code for comma box 2. Move up here to the user form, right click on comma box 2, view code. And again by default it's combo box 2 underscore change. I'm going to leave that as a change event. I'll paste this code in. I declare str as a string. Set str to equal comma box 2 dot text the word for with the space before and after it, and then comma box one dot text. Then the text box one value will be set to equal str. So this sets the text box one so that it becomes an area where you can preview what will be added to the worksheet. So you have the content of comma box two, the word for, the space before and after it, and the content in comma box one. That'll all be displayed in text box one. So we just have one more subroutine here. Moving back to the user form, it's going to be the command button. Here has the caption enter. Right click, view code, and you can see by default it's a click event here for command button one. I'm going to leave that. So here I'm going to declare str as a string. Set str to equal textbox1.value. And then set the active cell to equal str. So this is going to record the value of str in the active cell. And then it's going to move the active cell one row down. So you can see here one row zero columns. And then we're going to clean up the user form so it can be used for the next entry. Comma box two, value and row source and text box one value all set to nothing. Quotation mark, quotation mark. So moving back to the worksheet, let's see how this works. B2 is already selected here and this is the logical choice for the first cell. It's associated with the first participant. Move to the green rectangle, click on that, and in this case under disorder, this comma box, I'm going to hit the down arrow and select substance use. Under treatment, this comma box, click the down arrow, and I have the five therapies that the agency associated with substance use that they are using to treat substance use disorder. So I'm going to select group therapy. 
Now when I change comma box 2, you can see the text box 1 is populated, group therapy for substance use. If this is acceptable, I click enter, and it adds that string to cell B2, and it moves the active cell one row down. So now it's already ready for the next entry. So, so if I go back to comma box 1, this time I'll select depression, we'll go to the treatment comma box, and select psychodynamic therapy. So I have psychodynamic therapy for depression listed here. Click enter, and it's added to the worksheet. I hope you found this video on populating a combo box based on the selection of another combo box to be useful. And thanks for watching.